Being a Kid, uh, read by the author Tracy R. L. O'Flaherty. Chapter 3, Choose Love. People ask me, when did you know of your gifts of mediumship? And truly, I knew long before I knew. I knew I was seeing the world differently that I really wanted to communicate with the great heavens above. And looking back, I wonder why I didn't believe that I was a gift from the heavens as my dad told me. I guess it is having lack of confidence, a polite way of saying lack of self-love. A gift to my family? Are you kidding me? A gift? As I watched my siblings argue over the black and white television? Who would watch what on the two channels that we had? Who won? Not me. I was the youngest, and as the youngest, you learn to roll with the punches, so to speak. You learn how not to pick sides, for it would be detrimental to lose my space as their favorite sibling. There were no favorites, but I didn't choose sides. I knew when to stand up for myself. I knew when I pushed it. I knew when to stop talking. I knew that being the youngest had its challenges and its rewards. I knew that I was loved. I just couldn't get my head around being a gift to the family. So, I could have chosen to say a stork dropped me off at the front door. I could have chosen to believe that I was a gift. But somewhere, I combined the two and felt like I was delivered by a rather large bird carrying a pink blanket filled with me, a gift for all to hold. Such BS. Dinner time was a time that I truly found peace. It was a time when my family conversed about their day. It was a time where I could sit beside my dad and feel special. He always made me feel special, hence all the stories of how I arrived. But in all that, I knew that his heart was longing for something more, something that called for him. And as I sat from my high chair to a regular kitchen table chair, I sat beside my dad. He loved to fool around and tell me stories. He would gently guide me to use my knife and not my thumb. So you know, even to this day, I make sure not to place green peas on my fork with my thumb. His voice and kind words echo through my mind. And this is why I don't take you to restaurants, he would say. It was better than the story that feeding six people at a restaurant would be a challenge. I used my knife to get to have the treat of eating in a restaurant. And when I was older, about the age of 10, My dad took me out to eat. I knew I was special. I also knew to use my knife. So, as a child growing up in the 60s, I don't know, I wasn't old enough to really understand the world. And with not having the internet, the information of the world was scarce. And truly, I just wanted to play with the cats, eat my favorite food, and share my time with my dad. The house I grew up in was an old brick home. It was damp in the winter and damp in the summer. I still remember climbing into bed with many layers of clothing on just to stay warm. I would wonder why people do what they do. I would lay in my bed watching the car lights float by upon the ceiling. And with each car, I wondered where they would be going in such a small place. I grew up in the country where houses were far apart and the green grass grew rapidly. I loved it there. It was a time where all things made sense and nothing made sense. As my little toddler feet started to run, I started to see the world in a very different way. 
I could see beyond the ones around me. It was like I could see beyond what they could see. I thought it was natural. I thought it was normal. And looking back, I now understand that when the gifts of mediumship are granted, a whole new world is granted. So, don't ever lie. What? Don't ever lie. But why are you lying? I wanted to ask, but did not dare to. I could see beyond, and truly, I could see beyond the facade that people put on. I could clearly see it, like watching a movie. Everyone in a play, their play. Everyone making up the lines as they go. Now, I am not saying that I lived in a house of liars. I am saying that people are not honest with themselves. I could see this. It wasn't so much the words as what they were holding in their heart. Have you thought about what your heart holds and what you portray to others? Have you thought about each and every time you expanded a story to make it sound better? Now, as kids, stories were fun. My dad, being a great storyteller, had the opportunity to really lure me in with stories that could be true, left me wondering if it was true, or if the whole thing was to make me realize that really life is the play, and the play is real life. What is real and what is not? What one sees, another does not. What one feels about any one thing, another would not. And yet, we want others to see our sides, to agree with us. Hearing the truth of another can be like hearing a lie to yourself and the other way around. Lying to yourself can sound truthful to another. I could feel hearts, the aching hearts, the longing hearts, the hearts that wanted to be better, to make it better, to live better, and all the while we sat around the dinner table, conversing about our day, I would wonder when the play would come to an end. When is the curtain drawn when one lives in their play? When do people give themselves the gift of their own truth? When? I would ask myself, when? How long before this family really falls apart? And as six of us enjoyed the meal lovingly prepared, we all knew that something wasn't right with the world. We didn't need the six o'clock evening news. We didn't need to talk gossip about the neighbors. Wasn't our style. But what we did need was to talk, talk truth. Talk about why things were hidden. Talk about why diaries were written and erased. We needed to talk. We should have talked. We could have talked. And why not? We had the time. We had each other's attention, but the play was in place. The curtain up at every meal. When does the curtain go down? That's where I should start. <laughs>